Greetings and felicitations. So, I am not a vlogger, right? I've never made a promise of, of wanting to talk about things, and regulars of my channel know that I am a pretty much a PC gamer first and foremost, or at least that's how you would assume I am based off of the content I put up. I, I like recording me playing, um, you know, just usually strategy games. But the funny thing is, is that as a gamer, I personally identify mostly as a role-playing gamer. My favorite game of all time is Mass Effect. As, I mean, shoot, I even, I'm even wearing an Andromeda uh, hoodie right now, and that game is pretty much the worst one of the entire Mass Effect series, but I still love it. And yes, I'm counting, um, I'm counting the mobile games. There were a couple. They were tiny. They weren't good. <laughs> I think Andromeda isn't as good as those mobile games were, <laughs> but I still love the, the the atmosphere, the universe, you know, etc. I love immersion. Immersion's like my favorite thing in games. So why am I talking about this? Why am I going on about this? Okay, well, I got my first dip into role-playing games, I think with, with KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. Is actually, it's a favorite game of Air of Carthage's as well. Because I, I grew up as a Star Wars fan. Loved Star Wars. <sighs> uh, uh. Okay, but you get a kind of a, kind of a sci-fi tilt to things. But what I love the most about Star Wars is the, you know, the, the soap opera fantasy drama. And that's coming back in a second. From computer and console role-playing games, I, especially around college, I made a quick leap into something I thought I would never play in my lifetime, which was Dungeons & Dragons. And, of course, I had a blast. I mean, like, in hindsight, of course I love that game. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm a D&D &D nerd. Why not? Um, and even as I'm playing tabletop games with my friends, uh, and I've been doing so for more than 10 years now you know I, I then made that next same leap of logic at the time that i was playing pen and paper role-playing games including star wars because that's just how i am <laughs> i i quickly I, I i panned the idea of ever doing stuff like oh yeah but you know i would never like i could only do this at the table i couldn't do it on a computer i would never do that i would never play dungeons and dragons in a chat It's not true. <laughs> uh, I ended up actually becoming very involved in online chat role-playing communities. And the reason why is because the level of immersion you can get with an online chat community. But I did play a lot of uh, a more obscure game called Legend of the Five Rings. I've probably mentioned it before, especially when playing Shogun 2. Short version of that game, Magical Samurai. I know. It sounds weird, potentially lame, but boy howdy, that game, <laughs> that game took up oh, eight years of my life, and it, it had an associated um, customizable card game. The role-playing game is really good. Combat's really fatal. You get really immersed in the character, especially if you do like I did, and you play in an online chat community where all you have to do is walk in and just adopt this persona, and you're immersed. And it's also a great creative outlet. All of a sudden, I'm not just playing a game, I'm also writing stories. And I'm exploring drama, and I am building really meaningful connections between characters that I control and characters that other players control. And eventually, I ended up leading this game. I'm giving a lot of backstory here, but it's all going to come to a point. It's all going to come to a... It's going to get there, I swear. I ended up leading an online community for a year. Uh, and that online community, near and dear to my heart, you'll hear me talk about it occasionally, called Five Rings Online. It was, it's, it's a very long-lived game that's been around for more than 10, 15 years, this specific online community. And I met my wife playing this game. And we're still together. And... <laughs> yeah, we, we ended up leading this group together, and I mean, we even went so far as to have symbols from Legend of the Five Rings on our wedding cake, like, little details like that. And I've since moved on from Legend of the Five Rings. It's now currently a property of Fantasy Flight Games. It used to belong to Alderac Entertainment Group, who, who are much more well-known for board games, but AEG lost the L5R rights and gave it to FFG. Lots of, lots of abbreviations. Sorry. But the thing that always 
struck me about why I loved playing L5R so much is that it was a huge community and I am I love working with the community in a creative aspect and it was immersive and creative even as I'm doing all of that I was that same guy who hadn't learned his lesson who would say oh I would never LARP Oh my god, have you seen those dorks and they're throwing beanbags at each other? Oh no. I owe LARPers everywhere an apology. People who know me well know that one of my one of my jobs that I love doing, I I like to act. And I have an acting opportunity here in Philadelphia at a haunted house in a historic location. It's it's huge. But pretty much I'm in I adopt a character as a persona and I improvise with people for four to eight hours each night in the fall. And when you're doing that and you've adopted this persona, this character that isn't you, you're immersed and you're you're exploring a period of history at the same time while also being a goofball, which I am. Specifically to talk about the character uh, or the setting, 1920s speakeasy in a prison. And I'm a ghost at the same time. <laughs> so you develop these really immersive stories, these really immersive backgrounds, because you have customers coming up to you all the time, asking you all sorts of questions. Where are you from? What do you do? What is this? What is that? And and you have to have an in-character answer for all of it. I'm sure LARPers who are paying attention, if any are, and I hope that eventually some of them may, they're, they're probably out there going, hmm, so you created your own character, and you were immersed as this character, and you could not break character for a long period of time, and you were interacting with other people, including other people who also have made characters of their own. Yes. So you were LARPing. No, I was working. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, really, I swear. It was a job. And yes, I did get paid to do it. But eventually, again, my wife convinced me, hey, there's this thing going on, and I really want to give it a try. It's like, all right, fine, fine. You want to devote another weekend to this? Okay, go ahead. Let's 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 do this. Let's... She went and played a game called Damarung. Damarung is a name that I love because I am a huge, huge music nerd, and one of the biggest operas, biggest like behemoth of of material. One of the biggest operas that's ever been made is called Damarung, The Fall of the Gods by Wagner. It's part of his ring cycle. And everybody's familiar with Wagner's ring cycle. You may not know it. Uh, the, probably the most popular piece of music from all of it is Ride of the Valkyries. So she goes and she does this thing. And this is during my work season with uh, the haunted house I mentioned. So I'm busy on the weekends there. She goes out to the launching event. It's like an alpha test of it or something called Damarung Year Zero, the last good year. Okay, sure. Go ahead, have fun. She went, she came back, and it was tough for her because it was her first time doing anything like this. She had down moments and she had really good positive experiences from it as well. And regardless of the moments that didn't work out so well for her, she was like, I want to do this again. And she talked me into doing it. And so I joined her at a different game called Dead Legends. And it was my first ever LARP experience. Oh my god, I had so much fun. Uh, I got to dress up as a, as a... I got to dress up as a late 1800s American almost cowboy with a Nerf gun. <laughs> and I know it sounds lame, but I'm going to provide links. I want you to look at... Just like go through the pictures and see just how immersed everyone is, just how invested into their characters they are, and just how creative people can be. Oh my God. And I was like, yeah, give me more. And I went back and we did another one. And I love Dead Legends, and I'm going to keep playing this game. But the subject of this video, I went with my wife to Damarung. And it was event one, because the last one was event zero. Event one. Um, <sighs> oh my god. Damarung was an emotional roller coaster of fun. They use what is called theatrical combat style, which is, you know, you 
act out like you're doing the hits, but you don't actually, you don't want to directly hit anyone if you can help it. Doesn't mean that things don't happen. It's a player's first mentality, safety first, including emotional safety. I, I was a little surprised at how heavily important emotional safety was in this game until I started to play it. I have, I kid you not when I say I came back from this event Sunday, it's currently Friday in the morning, and I think I'm still on the path of emotional recovery. Speaking of emotional recovery, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have made friends that I hope I will be able to keep for decades. I have been so immersed in this character, I've made Camatilix, Cam for short. I, it's just, uh, uh, the stories I could tell. And as an actor, I don't think I've, I've ever been this fully submerged in a new person. Uh, I can't, I can't think of any acting experience I've ever done before that was anything quite like that. What made it so good are the people. The people who put it together, the people who provided the the really rich setting, the people who were there to watch out for everyone's individual, first and foremost, emotional safety, and then last but not least, the other people I got to play with. Now, is my experience indicative of the whole? No, it is not. Your mileage will vary. My dear sweet wife, did not have the same experience I did. She was involved with a different faction, and it triggered her in ways that she did not expect nor want. Again, emotional safety is so critical in these events. I just, I just, oh, I could, I could cry thinking about some of the stuff that I will experience in the future. Because based off of what I have learned just talking to other players after this event, what they have in mind for their, their futures, for their characters, the plot arcs they want to explore, I am going to be devastated. <laughs> I, am, I am going to be emotionally destroyed. But yeah, it's like I'm saying, the, the connections that I'm making with these, these people are for having, for, for meeting a lot of them for the first time and knowing some of them from Dead Legends because there was plenty of overlap between the two groups. Oh. Excuse me. I'm not crying, I swear. If you are the type of person who's, who's ever said, oh, I hate RPGs. Oh, I hate Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I hate LARPing. But you've never done it. I want you to give it a chance you'd be surprised. You'd be very surprised at just how much fun a goofy little thing like pretend samurai with with foam swords can be. And what makes it, like I've, I've, I'll, I'll keep saying it until the cows come home, what makes it successful is just how much energy everyone puts into it. The faction that I was with in particular is based off of English and Scottish Celts, you know, like old, old, old Celtic traditions. Not like the European Celts, but specifically the British Isles Celts. So like the fall, I would say, of the of the Celts. And that's one of the reasons why I actually started playing my Throwback Thursday campaign with uh, Attila Total Wars, the Picts, is because I knew I was going to be playing as a, as a Celtic-themed faction called the Kerns. To my fellow Kernsmen out there, I can't wait to see you again in June. I just, I just, oh, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I just, mm -mm. Today's a wine day. I'm practicing self-care, leave me alone. So do I have any stories to tell from this weekend that I'd like to tell? I have a million stories I would love to tell about uh, Damarung. I'm, I, I, I don't have time to tell you a million stories. I'm not going to, I'm not even gonna try. I'll tell you, Probably, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you two stories. I'll give you a small one and a big one. The small one is one I didn't even experience, but when I heard about it, I was like, "Oh man, I wish I had been there for that." I mentioned my character's name, Camatilix, Cam for short. He has a boss in this game. His boss is essentially the heir to the rebel king that my character follows. 
His name is Bowden. Bowden is a, an objectively good-looking, tartan-wearing, claymore-wielding Scotsman. <laughs> There's no other way to describe him. And there was a grand melee event where all of like the warriors got together and were gonna fight each other, like, you know, just for fun. It was like a, it was like, it was like a tournament, you know, a friendly competition. And my character would have loved to have been there, but I missed it, and I'll tell you that story in a bit. So Bowden's at this 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 competition, and he's facing off with one of our allies, a character by the name of Lord Otto Steiner. Steiner's one of our our big allies. And two of them are about to face off against each other. And I kid you not, there was a bagpiper at the event. And right before they're facing off, Bowden goes, Pipes! <laughs> and then the bagpiper starts playing right before they go into the fight. And then apparently, I don't know, I wasn't there. I just go in off of Bowden's words here. He creams Steiner in the fight. This is his bagpiper. Oh, I can't, I just, I wish I had been there for it. But that's the kind of... Um, <laughs> that's the kind of attitude and when you think about it from the perspective of that guy was a college student that guy's a tax accountant <laughs> I don't know what they're I don't know if he's actually a tax accountant I made that up uh, but uh, the bagpiper is just somebody who does it as a, as a hobby or professionally I suppose he got paid for the weekend <laughs> being surrounded by everybody else who's escaping their day to day lives to be a part of this for the weekend in a YMCA camp of all places that kind of thing just happens. The bigger story to tell, and I feel like just by telling the story, I'm doing a disservice to all of the little events, the little things, the little immersive details that people did from things like looking at the stars and reflecting on, you know, the constellations to sitting around and just shooting this. I try not to swear on my channel, but I don't care. Shooting the shit with my friends and, and just getting to know them and making jokes about everything. Here's a little event <laughs> with a with a tiny graphic content warning on it because of a word used. A a a mystical healer in the Nordvik culture is called a Volva. V O umlaut O so Vu maybe? I'm not sure about the pronunciation because it's it's not German. It's um like Norwegian slash Swedish. V O umlaut L V A comes barging into the current camp. He needs a, he needs a healer, and he shouts out, "I need a vulva." To which everybody in the room that was playing a Kurdish character with Scottish accents goes, "You need a what?" <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> little things like that. Like little things like archery contests. Little things like watching a, a a band of Vikings in a shield wall come down the road facing off against trolls. Dressed as actual freaking trolls like giant they looked like they looked like sports mascots on crack. It was intense. Anyway, my character has a deep-seated hatred of trolls because the trolls have, have uh, taken over the royal family of the Kurnish people who we are rebelling against. And so it is that a Nordvik Jarl sacrifices his infant daughter to save his wife's life to the trolls. Not like a death sacrifice, a turns, him o turns the kid over to the trolls, to which every Kurnish character around, myself included, goes, no, 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 no. We didn't stop it from happening, but we did follow the trolls back to their home. And these trolls are very intelligent. They have millennia to their names as each individual entities. And they know the end of the world is coming. Didn't stop my our characters from going there and following them. So I gathered, uh, oh, I shouldn't say I gathered, but I and about a half dozen other of the Kerns go out of our way to go and speak to King Vandal to see if we can learn anything about this baby and see if we can save it and save our our Nordvik hosts because they're hosting us here in this location can be spared this this trauma that the Kerns are still going through hundreds of years later. Cam is a bit of a loud-mouthed shite prick. 
He really is. And so his fellow Kernish friends were like, if you're going in there, you're not going to say it. Thing. And I was like, oh, hold on, I got, I got the prop. Hold on, I'll be right back. So it struck me at the time that I have something I can do. I'm wearing, uh, during all of this, a, a necklace with the symbol for the rebellion. This is, you know, the stag on a moon. And a bunch of us in the, the Kernish group actually picked these up in advance for, as like a symbol of our unity. And I was like, okay, well, this is clearly an important symbol to me. I'll make my oath that I won't talk while we go talk to the Troll King and all of his allies. And so it was that I went like this. There was so much my character could have said. He swore an oath. He didn't say anything. He just had that in his mouth the entire time as everybody else in the Kernish faction answered all of the questions. And if you can picture it, we are inside this mystical home of the trolls called the Dim Halls. And there's a long table, longish. I'm sitting at one end of the table, and King Vandal, King of the Trolls, sits at the other end of the table. There's Kerns surrounding me, and there's trolls surrounding him. They're bringing in other players from other factions that they had captured. They're just ushering them in, and they're, you know, they're dealing with them. And I'm just sitting there trying not to flip a table on the guy <laughs> in character, right? We learned that the kid is safe. The kid isn't going to be consumed or destroyed. They're going to raise the kid. But this is also the realization of everything that the Kerns are actually afraid of. And there's nothing that we can do to save this kid other than potentially giving up our own Kernish rebellious leaders. But that's out of the question. So... We leave there, having gained very little other than just the attention of the trolls. And one troll in particular, who used to be Kernish, decides, you know what? Screw that one guy in particular. Let's get him. And the troll king came back later on with a small army and tried to... Apparently, I was the target, and I didn't find this out until later on. Um, get rid of that one Scotsman in particular, that one Kernsman in particular. And it was so satisfying when they finally came out of the dim holes and came to find me, because at that point, I wasn't sworn to silence anymore. I got to, as I describe it, yell angrily in generic Scottish at them. All right, yell of the... I'm making fun of a culture's accent, and I should stop. Sorry. It's my heritage, right? I can do that? Maybe? Well, anyway. And then to bring this arc to its full, like... From beginning to end. So I, I was in the Dim Halls meeting King Vandal, and that's why I missed out on the Grand Melee. Nuts. The last attempt... Or not the last, but close to the last attempt that the trolls made to, like, really knock over the Kerns and and probably steal a bunch of our food and... and and treasure, or, or to take our our um, faction leaders or religious leaders from us. They made an effort. They made a huge push. Our Crownlander allies came to our side. Uh, I had one of those really, really like straight out of the movies moments where I side by side with this other this other player, and I recognize the the sigils on her armor, and I'm going, "Are you the one they call the the peasant knight?" And she goes, "I." And I was like, "Good. I'm looking forward to fighting beside your side." And then we charged into battle together, and then. That player told me later on, actually, I the character had just lost her knighthood, but she wasn't about to change it. I'm like, ah, potatoes, tomatoes. No, no, the fight goes on, and it's a huge melee, or going back and forth. And I noticed that King Vandal is, is down on a knee, not ten paces away from me. Seeing my opportunity, I, Cam charges in. He blocks a blow from, uh, from another troll who's just trying to stop him from getting past. And then, using the in-game safety first rules, checked in with the player to be like, I'm, I'm about to drag you away from here and, and decapitate you. <laughs> and sure enough, that's what happened. Um, unfortunately, the trolls don't just die like that, but it was very satisfying. <laughs> Throw him against the pillar, <sighs> took off his head a la Anakin Skywalker killing Dooku. Cam turns around faces the battle and shouts at all of them, I've killed ya, king! <laughs> that get off a land! It had the opposite effect. <laughs> Instead of them going back to the dim halls, 
all of the trolls turned around, looked at me, and went, That is one dead boy. Spelled B-O-I. They tore my character apart. And my character could have died or been captured there, but was dragged away from uh, from harm by a character who ended up becoming his best friend, uh, named Orla. Spelled with at least ten letters. Kernish names. Not to put too fine a point to it, but my character having all of this hatred against trolls, Orla is also half troll herself. So there's a lot of, you know, personal growth and, and moments of really both emotional and tender exchange. And just going from being at King Vandal's mercy inside his home, trying not to flip a table, not even with the ability to use my voice, to getting the chance to kill him later on, even even knowing that it wasn't going to, to do anything, as the trolls are standing over me, like, stabbing me, and going, like, you don't understand how we work, do you? I'm just laying there going, worth it! <sighs> so yeah, there there's the stories I promised. But objectively i think back on this and i go there's still people out there in this world who are who are going to think that this is the the dumbest stuff to do for a weekend that people would pay money to make these ridiculous costumes to go out there and do this ridiculous thing to beat each other up with padded weapons or nerf guns or boffers and or bean bags and still just have the time of their lives and I am fully converted into the brain space of being like, yeah, no, I want to use more creative energy on this. Uh, I'm a musician. I'm an actor. I'm an, a really amateur writer. I am now doing everything in my power to use all of those skills because I want to bring my my best self to these events because the more that I am able to provide the better the experience is going to be for the other players around me. And that was the biggest thing I learned is that if you open up your heart to the fullest potential of, of what you can, what you can safely give, you will be amazed at the outcome. So now I'm going to throw some links at you. They're going to be in the description. If you ever find yourself in late June within five to six hours of of East Pennsylvania, look at Damrung. Give it a shot. You will not be disappointed. There's a Facebook group. There's a website. I'm going to post up links for both. The people who who were in charge of this event don't know if they will be in the future. Uh, one of them in particular, Erica Skirpin, has her own blog. She does a lot of writing for, um, for acting and for LARPing. I'm going to link her blog below. And there's more events coming up in the future for, honestly, just the moral of the story here is if there's an opportunity near you to join a LARP, even if you only have a passing interest in the setting, but you love immersion, you love people, you love costuming, or if you have a creative skill that you just haven't had a chance to use lately, look it up in your area. I guarantee you'll you'll find something near you that you can do. I have never met a more welcoming and friendly and emotionally healthy community. And by emotionally healthy, I mean more like emotional responsibility. You you won't regret any of it. So I'm also, there's another link I'm going to show you, which is the Dead Legends link, because I want you to see some of the pictures that they have. And you can see it in the faces of everybody there, of everybody in every one of these pictures. The, the care and attention to detail that they have, but also the care and the attention that they have for everybody else around them. I'm Yarl of the Appian Way. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed. And if, if this gains traction, I'll be very happy. And I'll do more. Alright? Love you all. Bye-bye.